Okay, so in today's tutorial, we want to look at how to predict or forecast real stock prices using GBM in R. And first of all, first of all, I have to know how to import our data sets because we are going to use a um, real data set. So we want to import our data set using this code of line. So I have this um, data set CSV file on my folder that I'm going to use. If you don't have any of these data sets, you can just go to Yahoo Finance to just um, download or upload some of the stock index just to follow this example. Alright, so I'm going to view the data set. Alright, so here we go. We have basically 501 observations of 12 variables. Excluding the first variable, which means that we have 11 companies that has been listed on the Ghana Stock Exchange. Basically, I want to use the GBM to forecast um, the daily. These are daily returns, closing prices for the companies. I want to just make a short-term forecast for some of these variables. We are going to use ADB, right? So, starting from um, 19th of March 2020, I think it ends on somewhere August. Let's see. Yeah, first of August. But I'm going to extract some of the stock returns. Um, I just want to start from let's say 2021 right I just want to start from 2021 so I just want to start from January 1st 2021 to let's say um, 31st July 2021 yeah so which is on the 500 observation right the first one was on the 289th observation so I'm gonna extract that I'm going to use the ADB stock values, so extract that. The 289 observations for the first January 2021, and the 500 observation is for the um, the 31st July 2021, right? So I'm extracting those stock returns, and the second index here is for the position. That's the index for the ADB um, variable, right? So I just want to do this. Once we are done with this, we just want to set the last 14 days for testing. This is to just make a short term forecast, right? Um, these are daily stock returns. So we are just predicting for the next 14 days ahead. So, and also we are setting this just to also compare the accuracy of our model by comparing the testing, da um, the testing data or the actual data with the predicted values, right? So we, we need this we have to set this aside for now then we, want to, we also want to set the first 198 days for training this is basically what you're going to use for the calibration so let's run this then we want to transform this trading set into um, time series object this basically follows what you have just done in the prediction of simulator stock returns um, using GBM in R, right? It follows the same routine. So you can go watch that video and just come and follow this. They are basically the same, right? So let's run this. Then I'm going to plot the stock prices for ADB to see how the stock returns um, behaves. So when we plot the series, how it looks like, right? Starting with initial value of 8.5 or 4 right it's just have some down, short period of downward trend and begin to have some irregular path moving um upward with some jumps within it right so we just want to set up the initial value i want to use the first value for the testing data as the initial value so let's run this then I want to create the drift and diffusion volatility equation. So this is just an expression for the volatility and uh, the drift term, right? And this is also the expression for the volatility term or equation. So we can run these two lines. All right. So once we are done with this, I want to estimate the parameter now. So this is a pseudo code for estimating the parameter. I'm basically using this pseudo codes because we have already looked at this pseudo codes in our previous tutorial. So please, if you haven't watched my videos on GBM simulation, kindly subscribe to my channel where you have a playlist on GBM simulation. Kindly go watch all those videos before you jump into this to make things 
easier for you right so let's move on so this is serial code for estimated address parameter right so I'm gonna run this all right so I want to see the drift estimate so here we go all right then as I want to do the same for volatility so serial code for estimating the volatility that's the serial code okay so let's run this once we have this we can now get a volatility estimate all right so we are good to go all right so now once we have this we will now want to assign this estimate to some object that's it the object for the drift estimate you just want to assign it to drift and the volatility estimate want to assign it to diffusion right so we can run this to course of lines then want to create a drift and diffusion equation for the simulation exercise right so this is basically what you are going to use for the simulation for to help us make the prediction of the stock returns this is basically for the diffusion or the volatility right okay so let's run these two lines once we have this we are basically substituting the drift term right that we have already obtained to the equation that we already set um, in our preceding um, line and we also don't want to do the same for the diffusion right so once we are done with this we can now get a number of simulations so we just want to replicate this 1000 times then we want to get a predicted value this is basically a container to store the predicted values right so we want to run this code offline then this is basically a container to store all the simulated values that for calculating the standard deviation that we are going to use for the confidence interval all right once we are done with this we want to get this package um if you don't have this package that is a simulation of the efficient process package then you have to install it you see the install dot packages right and just type this sim dot diff pro so because i have this installed i'm just going to comment and load the package using the library function right once i have this i can run the remaining code of lines right so um this is basically going to do a uh, one dimension it's going to simulate the stock returns um it's going to simulate a stochastic differential equation using the error method for the for the next 14 days all right so let me go back let's go back so this should be for the for 14 days ahead oh yeah so this is basically going to be um this is basically a simulation of one dimension stochastic differential equation this is the number of time um the number of simulation steps and we are having it to be 13 because the first value the initial value is going to be added to this to make 14 right so this initial stock return is going to be part of this to make 14 that's we are going to store it in the container that you have created right so this is basically the, num the number of simulation steps this is the initial stock value for the process and this is basically the number of and uh, the time step for the stimulation is basically going to be a daily returns right and this is basically the drift term that we have set and the diffusion is going to be this so this is basically a drift estimate and the volatility estimate right and the method is going to be error we have different methods right so if one doesn't work you have to change you can look at it once you just um type help or just position your cursor here and just use f1 to get 
um, how this get different methods for the um, the error. So that's what I've done, and this is what we have. So um, that's the simulation of one dimension stochastic differential equation. So we have different methods for basically using. We have Ella, Minstein, and the rest. So if one doesn't work, can try to check the other um, methods to see how it works. Right. So let's go back to plot. Let me scroll this down. So um, yeah, I think we are good to go. So let's see the remaining code of line. All right. So let's see this. Once we are done with this, we want to get a mean value, and the mean value for this simulation exercise is going to help us to get the predicted values. All right. So let's see that and see the results. So that's going to be the um, predicted values. All right. So we want to compare this to the actual values that you have set aside. But before we do that, let's get a standard deviation that we're going to use for the for calculating the confidence intervals and there's a line code of line that help us to get a standard deviation right then we want to compare the actual versus the predicted values so if you look at um, the testing data these are the, um, the values that we set aside for to be used for validating our model we can see that if you compare it with the predicted values the predicted value seems to follow closely but um, yes yeah, beginning to follow it closely and you can see that if you had to compute the mean absolute percentage error we are going to have a very um, um, good forecast right so let's see how to do this so this function is going to help us to get a mean absolute percentage error the input you have to input the first input is the a dot value that's the actual value the p dot value is the predicted values they want to basically multiply this want to divide get a one divided by the length of the actual value multiplied by the sum of the absolute value the difference between the actual value and the predicted value divide this by the actual value then we have to multiply this by 100 right so this is just a pseudo code for the MPA AP so let's see the result for the MAP so we have less than 2% or approximately 1% and we know that in literature MAP values within 10% or 20% are basically an identific uh, they are basically signifying that um, the model is actually performing well right once you're able to have an MAP value within 10% or let's say 20%, then it means that the model is actually um, accurate, right? So the JVM model is actually predicting or forecasting our stock prices pretty, pretty well, right? So once we have this, we want to just create an upper and lower confidence bounds. So this is basically going to help us to get a upper bound and the next line is going to help us to get a lower bound. Then we want to see these two values together, right? So we want to put them in a data frame and see the results. So let's run this. All right, so here we go. So this is the confidence interval, right? The lower confidence and the upper confidence bound. Once we have this, let's plot the series. We want to plot um, the original data set, the testing data set, and the predicted values on one graph. So we want to use a ggplot. If you don't have this package, then you have to install it. Usually the install dot packages. So ggplot2. Right, I have this, so I'm going to comment. And just load the, this package using the library function. Right, so I'm gonna now run this code of line, run the next line, which is basically going to plot the original data, then run this, which is going, going to plot the testing data, right? 
then plot the next line which is going to plot the predicted um, series or stop values then the next is to label uh, y axis label the x axis and give a title GBM forecast for ADB then we want to add a confidence um, bound to our plot so that the code of line for that then we want to see the results right so let's do this oh predict val I think no it should not it should just be predict x yep so let's rerun this right let's rerun this so here we go so let me zoom it so that we can have a look at it so we see that um, the predicted values per the plot doesn't seem to follow it right but we can see that it's basically uh, giving us pair of confidence bound it means that it follows closely even though not actually following it precisely right so um this is basically how to um plot or not plot per se <laughs> this is basically how to forecast or predict um real stock prices using gbm in r please if you find value in this video don't forget to subscribe if you haven't to get more updates thank you for watching